everyone, it's Lisa here. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add some lovely whimsical details to your drawing and some uh, vintage texture that you can add to the background and the foreground to give it some uh, lovely interest. So what I've gone and done is created a 400 by 400 mil document in Procreate. Uh, you can choose any size you prefer, but what I am going to do is I'm going to supply you uh, the, the framework for this girl because I'd like you to follow along as much as possible. So you can go ahead and download the PNG file included in the details of this video. You'll find the link and just bring it into your Procreate document and this is going to be your framework uh, before we begin to actually sketch out the character. So you can go ahead and pause this and do that so you can follow along. Okay, so I've already gone ahead and imported my framework into Procreate. So you'll see it on layer one. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. And I'm going to use a brush from my um, Instant Artist collection called Sketcher. And just very lightly, we're going to start plotting out our, our sketch lines. I'm just drawing the hat at this stage. She's kind of wearing like a winter hat and the front part of her fringe. And as I said, at this point, we're not going for perfection. We're just trying to get a feel for where things lie. Just some cute little eyes and I just want to get an idea of cheek placement and she's going to be wearing quite a chunky sort of wintry jersey okay so you'll notice that the arms um, look a little off because they are actually designed for a front view a um, position so what I actually just wanted to do with these um, arm brushes that I you know brought in for this particular illustration I like the the, the actual hands on her so that's quite an important uh, placement for me. Uh, th that's what I focused on when I placed the actual brush. And what we're going to do is we're just going to use this section as our kind of like our, um, how do I say, our marker. That, that's what we're aiming for to bring our arms down to. Okay, so I'm first just plotting out her, her dress and then just her armhole is probably going to be somewhere around there and remember we mentioned this area is important so that's going to be her cuff of her, her little jersey so her arm in this side is going to be straight and then this side is probably going to be a bit more bent and then her front of her dress sort of comes down and you'll notice I'm not going for precision at all I'm just simply plotting out my my drawing and the idea at this point. So when you're sketching, I just want to make this line rounder. So when you're sketching, be loose with your 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 uh, strokes because this is, this is the free part. This is the part where you're kind of figuring out your form, your shape the pose of your character 
and it's definitely not about precision at this stage so when you are loose like this you get better kind of freer shapes that should result in a better drawing okay so she's wearing little boots they're probably going to be about there And you'll see my line work is quite grubby. <laughs> okay, I think we're getting an idea of what she's going to look like. I'm leaving the hands at this point because what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the, the brush back on later um, because there's no point in drawing precision now um, if it's not even our final layer. So I'm going to leave the hands for now. And then I'm going to turn off my uh, framework layer. And now you'll see we left with a sketch. I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. This is going to be our final line work layer. And I just want to bring the opacity down of our original sketch. So on our new layer, we're going to start working on our final line work. I'm just adding kind of bumpy lines for the ribbing of the her little hat. I'm actually not going to do her hair at this stage because I want to use a different brush. So I'm going to go ahead and continue with her face. I don't like that. And as you know, the nice thing about Procreate, you can always just erase anything you don't like. Okay, so we're just working on her dress, just defining her armholes and the front of her dress and just finishing off her, her sleeves Okay, I'm going to turn the reference, original reference layer back on because I want to finish her hands. That's why I love these uh, the character brushes so much. It saves me so much time. Instead of trying to struggle with, you know, fiddling with hands and trying to redraw them, this is like a super fast way to get that done. I'm going to go and turn that off again and carry on with the rest of our drawing.
and obviously if you need to rotate your your canvas it's very important that you you feel comfortable when you're drawing so rotate your canvas as you need to otherwise your line work starts becoming a little wonky Just going to finish your little hat. Oops, that didn't look very nice. Okay, I'm not going to finish the top of her hat because I have something in mind for that. I want to use one of my uh, stamps for that. So I'm going to create a new layer because I want to get on with her hair. And I'm going to use Deliciously Inky for that. The nice thing about this particular brush, it has such massive uh, line variation depending on your uh, pressure. So um, yeah, it's great if you want if you want some really inky sort of grungy, kind of like a messy uh, line work that gives you some great variation without too much effort. So I'm just simply with some lovely loose strokes. And do the same with the top of her hair. And we're not going for precision. We want just lovely, whimsical sort of strands. That are, you know, being blown by the wind. And I'm just varying my pencil pressure every now and then, just for some variation. Okay, I think we are ready to add some color. I'm going to turn off my reference layer and I'm going to set my background color and I'm going to create a new layer for her skin and this time I'm going to use the the big fat pencil brush which I find to be super versatile and it gives you like a quick kind of pencil texture and the great thing is you can make the size pretty large to cover a nice big, you know, big fat area. <laughs> and I just want to get rid of that. Okay, so choosing just a slightly pinkier color, I'm bringing the opacity of my brush down and just enlarging it slightly because at this stage I just want to start adding some color variation to her, to her skin. And I've just made it slightly darker each time.
Okay, so I'm just sort of evening that out a dash with my original colour. Okay, so I'm going to work on her dress now, so I'm creating a new layer again. And I think I'm going to stick to that brush for now. Oops. Make sure your opacity is at 100%. And I'm just filling with very quick strokes, filling in a large area. We can always come back and clean that up. And again, creating a new layer. And this time I'm going to choose a, a lighter blue than the background itself. And we're just going to do all the areas that are her, her little jersey or jumper, sweater, depending on where you live, however you pronounce it. <laughs> And I think I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to do the same for her, her little hat. See, I'm going super fast, no precision. You know, with texture brushes, the whole idea is to have that kind of hand-drawn loose look. So that works perfectly for that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and work on her hair. So creating a layer just beneath her hair. I'm going to choose a... Hmm. Maybe something like that. I think I'm going to swap to the wet and dry because I just want some interesting sort of strands coming out. So with this brush the harder you push, the more ink you'll get. And then with, with lighter strokes, you can get lovely sort of texture detail. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the hair layer to multiply. I think that looks a lot better. And then I'm going to add some color variation in the hair color layer. So I'm going to choose a lighter color. And coming down to my soft texture shader, I'm just going to make the top of her hair just a dash lighter, just for some variation. And I'm just going lighter each time. And then going back to the original color, I'm going for a darker color. And then underneath her hair. And we just want to build up the color until we're happy with it. I'm going to go darker. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. 
Okay, so let's work on her boots. I'm going to choose the same color as her hair, creating a new layer. Um, if you, yeah, if you feel like you're getting confused with all the layers, it's a good idea to uh, name them. But to save time in this tutorial, I'm not going to do that. And again, I'm just literally filling the area very roughly. And again, color variation, too much. So now I'm just concentrating on where there would be shadow. Going back to the original one, I just want to smooth that out, doesn't look all that nice. And then I'm going to choose a quite a bit lighter, bring my size down, and then just make lighter areas to indicate the separation. And that's starting to give us a better shape. Okay, I'm going to quickly do her leggings probably choose white yes back back onto the big fat pencil and now we're just going to add some stripes using the same color as her dress. I'm now going to use Deliciously Inky and just randomly making stripes with all that lovely texture. And now we want to clip that to her socks. So I'm just going to select the layer and choose clipping mask and now clip it to the actual her little stockings that she's got okay so I'm gonna add some pattern and like a whimsical detail to her dress so on a new layer I'm gonna choose a darker well actually I'm gonna go with orange let's see what happens and I'm gonna choose one of my pattern brushes called pattern bubbles and I'm just randomly painting over that. I'm going to clip it to the dress and then I'm going to change the, um, the opacity or should, should I say blending mode to color burn and then the next thing I want to do is create some detail at the bottom of her dress. I think I'm going to use a darker sort of a darker pinky red And then using the markings um, stamp tool, or stamp brush should I say, I'm just literally randomly stamping out areas. Actually, let's clear that, because what I actually want to do is form more of a, oops, more of a curve it does something like that it's looking better again I'm going to clip that and I'm probably going to set that to linear burn yeah that looks pretty good so back onto the dress layer I'm just going to add some color variation and using the original color, I'm just going to go slightly lighter back to my pencil. Uh, there you are. It's still not bright enough, so I'm just going to do that. There we go. So 
So that just adds some variation to your dress. So I'm just going to go back and choose the original color. And I just want to fill in those areas on the far side of her dress, the bottom as well. Okay. So I'm just going to quickly create a new layer for her pom pom. And bring that down, bring it into position, maybe make it a dash bigger. See what that looks like. Yeah, I think that's cute. And then on the same layer, we're just going to give her some cheeks. I'm using the free selection tool. And I just want to turn my reference back on. But this time it needs to go right to the top. Oops. Using the selection tool, I'm just selecting two kind of circly shapes. And then I'm going to come over to my build up stamp. I use the fragmented. And I'm just literally, let me just zoom in. I'm just literally going to stamp it until I'm happy with the intensity. Yeah, I think that looks great. Turn off that top layer. And then the final thing I want to add to the dress is a cute little sort of blobby pattern. Well, spotty pattern, should I say. <laughs> and I'm just going to randomly paint. Again, we're going to clip it. And I think what I might do is actually bring it below. Yeah, that's better. Okay, I think she's coming together. So now what we're going to work on next is the shadow um, of her, you know, of her, her body and her hair and all the details. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. Choosing kind of like a dark version of the background. It's almost like a blue gray. I'm going to use the Raphael shader. And I'm just going to start building up shadow. So what I'm kind of pretending, if that's the right word, <laughs> that the light source is coming from the right. So everything on her left will obviously have a bit of shadow. And I'm just being careful around her face because we don't want that too harsh. And then adding, adding shadow where, where I think it'll go basically. You can always come back and delete areas if you're not happy. I'm just adjusting the brush as I go to um, the size of the area. Okay, now we're going to set that to multiply and just play with the opacity until we're happy with the results. 
So what I want to do is, I actually would like to change just the, the area on her face a dash. I just want to see what this is going to look like. So I've chosen a kind of like an orangey color. Okay, that's too orange. So I'm going to turn that down to de kind of like desaturated a dash. The reason I'm doing this is because I wanted a warmer shadow on her face. Not so cold. So the color of the shadow kind of plays a role in the final results and the feel of, of your drawing. And I'm going to go back to my pencil and choose the same dark color, the sketcher. And then I'm just going to create some definition just to define areas that I want definition. And those little sort of, you know, the ribbings of the, the jersey will probably have shadow. And top one will have shadow. And yeah, I think she's coming together. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just as a finishing touch for her hair, um, her hat, I'm gonna choose a pattern. It's going to be the diamond dash pattern and the same color as her, you know, the, the, the sort of drawing layer, which is that sepia color. I'm just going to fill that area in. And then back to her hat layer using a white and the big fat pencil. Whoops. I'm literally just going to. color in all the, you know, the every second diamond. Okay. Now we're going to start building texture in the background. So creating a new layer under all, you know, all the layers of, of the girl. I'm going to choose a darker color to the background. And coming down to one of my build up brushes, I'm going to use the pencil crown. Just making the canvas slightly smaller. And I'm just going to randomly stamp out this texture. And then with my eraser, actually what I might do is I might move that to the top and have a look what that looks like. So with my eraser, I'm going to select the soft wiggle. Actually, let's go with unleashed. And I'm just going to take away some of that, especially around her face. But we do want to leave some of it and if I zoom in you'll start seeing it's kind of these lovely sort of scratchy scratchy marks which we want <laughs> and I'm going to set that to multiply and again I'm going to just play with the opacity until I'm happy with the results yeah I think that looks pretty good and then creating a new layer using a white color. I'm going to use another build up brush called Soft Wiggle, probably one of my favorite brushes. <laughs> and yeah, needs to be bigger. I'm just going to make that a bit, quite a bit bigger. And again, we're just randomly stamping out texture here and there. And we can always remove 
you know, what we don't want. And that's starting to give it a, you know, a lovely aged look. So I'm going to leave it kind of like about 60% and then doing the same, I'm going to sort of delete around her area just so that we don't, uh, using, um, I'm using a different one called a cross hatch as the eraser. And I'm just taking away some of it. But we certainly don't want to take all of it because it is adding some, some really nice detail. Okay, I've just noticed the shadow on her hands doesn't look all that nice. It's the wrong color. So I'm going to go back to that shadow layer. And let me just make sure it's the right one. Yeah. And then going back to that kind of desaturated color, I'm just going to get rid of the shadow that's there. So I'm just using a different brush. And we use the Raphael shader, if you can recall. Yeah, oh, that looks a lot better. Just want that really small. Much better. Just cleaning that up. Okay, and then. Before we um, continue to the last two layers that I want to create on top of her, I want to actually give her a shadow underneath her body, kind of like where she's like a standing shadow. So I'm going to choose, again, a darker brush, uh, sorry, a darker color, and choose a crosshatch build up stamp brush. And I'm just going to, I'm just experimenting with the size at this point. And then I'm just going to stamp out you know um, a shadow underneath her and you'll notice without any effort you've created kind of like a really nice artistic crosshatch texture and then using my selection tool I'm just going to squish that make sure you have it on free, on free form and I'm just going to make it skinnier. So something like that. And then again with our eraser, I just want to kind of shape the one sided dash better. So using the soft wiggle, I'm just, just shaping this edge on the right hand side just a bit better. And then I'm going to set that to multiply. And then play with the opacity until I'm happy and I think that's looking pretty good so the last two layers I want to create on top so a new layer I'm going to use one of my stamps and choosing the same sepia brown that I used for her line work I'm going to literally stamp once and then move her or well move the, the stamp should I say into position I'm just kind of manipulating it into the right size that I want. Yeah, that looks good. Maybe just a dash over. Maybe something like that. And setting that to, oops. Maybe darker color looks better. And then again, I'm just uh, playing with the opacity, just until I'm happy. I think that looks quite cute. And I'm just going to extend that dash. And then a final layer, choosing white. I'm going to come over to the Build Up Splatter brush. And we're going to give her some snow. Yeah, maybe just that. <laughs> and that's it, we're done. You've now created some lovely whimsical texture and detail to your drawing and I hope you learned some techniques that you can apply to your own work. Hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching.